Hey guys, it's Connie here. Thanks so much for tuning into my channel. In today's video, I just wanted to get into um, something called the five solas of the Reformation. Um, and this is just to kind of give us a foundation before we really start to dig in to the heart of Reformed theology, which is the doctrines of grace, otherwise known as TULIP, otherwise known as Calvinism, which I I don't like that term Calvinism. I don't like to call myself a Calvinist, but whatever. I, I, I like the phrase doctrines of grace, which is um, actually pretty controversial among even Christians. So before we get into that, um, I wanted to lay a foundation. And um, I think one of the most important things to talk about uh, are the five solas of the Reformation. So what are the five solas? Well, basically, these are five Latin phrases um, that were like the foundational principles of the early reformers. And it was sort of like their motto, it was their heart cry, and it was really, um, these five solas were really in response to the, uh, it, was, it was more like a corrective response to the Roman Catholic Church, um, and also it was a very powerful they were powerful biblical declarations of truth. The first one I want to talk about is sola scriptura, and that is scripture alone. Um, so sola scriptura emphasizes that the word of God, the Bible, is our final authority. So whatever is taught by uh, you know the leader or of a church or by tradition um, they have to be in line with the Word of God if it contradicts it or it says something that doesn't match up then it has to be disregarded and thrown out so that is what sola scriptura means um, it's that we have to uh, use the Bible as our final authority because the Bible is inspired by God, 2 Peter 1, 20 and 21, and it's also God breathed, 2 Timothy uh, 3, 16 and 17. So if you see me looking down, it's because I've got my notes here on my laptop. So um, yeah, just bear with me. And yeah, basically that's what sola scriptura is, is that we use the Bible as the final authority against whatever uh, doctrines that we are um, looking at. Uh, the second one that I wanted to go to is sola gratia, which means grace alone. This means that um, grace, which is a free gift of God, it's, it's an unmerited favor upon God. Um, I'm sorry, it's the unmerited favor of God to the sinner. So salvation is by grace, okay? So we see that in Ephesians 2, 8 and 9, for by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not your own doing, it is the gift of God, not a result of works, so that no one may boast. So salvation is of God. There's nothing that we as we could possibly do, there's no good work that we could possibly show God to earn our salvation. Um, our salvation is a gift. It's, it's the grace of God. So that's how we are saved, by grace alone. The third one is sola fide, which is faith alone. This means that we are saved from our sins by faith alone. Um, faith alone meaning um, it's not that we got baptized at a young age or as an infant or whatever. It's not because we you know, were members of a church, um, because of our good works, because of, you know, we think that we're a good person, salvation is a free gift to all who accept it by faith, John 3.16, and it's not based on our effort or our good deeds. The fourth sola is solo Christo, or solus Christus. I'm really horrible at Latin. This means that Christ Jesus um, is our means of salvation. There's no other way that God has provided man to be saved except by the death, burial, and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. Um, that's John 14, 6. Um, he's our only mediator between us and God the Father, 1 Timothy 2, 5. And Jesus is the human revelation of God to us. Um, he, you know, John chapter one, if you want to read 
uh, that Jesus um, was basically with God in eternity um, and he was not created. Um, he is not just a prophet. He's not just a good teacher. He is God in the flesh, Emmanuel. And um, so basically that's what that means. It's by Christ alone that God provided um, the sinner to be reconciled back to God because Christ was the a sacrifice that was given to pay uh, for the sins of man and to redeem us. So the final sola is soli deo gloria, which means the glory to the glory of God alone. Soli deo gloria basically emphasizes um, the believer to live life for the glory of God. Okay, so rather than striving to please man, um, to you know serve at church and to look good in front of other people, in front of your fellow church members or whatever. Um, rather than living for yourself and bringing glory to yourself, it's about, it's not about that. It's about bringing glory to God in the way that you live your life, in the way that, even the way you view your salvation. So we see that uh, 1 Peter um, 2.24, Isaiah 43.7, um, we are to live for Him and to glorify Him. Those are the five solas of the Reformation. Um, again, like I said, these five solas were really sort of a like a response to um, the Roman Catholic Church and the heresies of the Roman Catholic Church and just all the excesses that they basically added on to the Gospel of Christ, um, which are unbiblical. And these were this was the heart cry of the early reformers, and this is to set the foundation for the doctrines of grace. That is it. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I will be back with um, on more videos, especially on the doctrines of grace, and we're going to really dig into what those are and um, where we can find that in scripture. All right, guys, so that's it for me. I will catch you in the next video. Bye.